This is a special recording to coincide with the UK Games Expo 2019, brought to you by Dave and Matthew of The Effect Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Effect. I'm Dave and this is an Alien RPG actual play podcast. The Effect has been working with our friends at Free Alligan and we are delighted to be running official demonstration games written by Matthew and me at the UK Games Expo this year. This actual play podcast is a playtest I ran of one of those scenarios. And Matthew and I thought we'd broadcast it as a little gift to all those who can't be with us in person in Birmingham. It was recorded down the pub, so please bear with the occasional moments when the quality isn't quite what we would like. This is not an official Free Alligan broadcast. They have other plans for streaming actual play programmes in the future. This is just the Effect podcast doing what we do, and what we love most. Welcome to LV426. The year is 2179, and the colony of Hadley's Hope is thriving. But little do they realise what is about to befall them. Episode 1 of Hope's Last Stand Right, welcome everyone to uh, the next game, the uh, alien role-playing game um, playtest. This time I'm going to be running um, Hope's Last Stand again, but in a slightly different way, because last time we played it you didn't get very far. Um, <laughs> so there's quite a lot left of it for us to play. Again, we're in Hadley's Hope. Uh, the map's there. So, uh, Tone, do you want to give me a number between one and three? Three. Okay. okay. Roger, between one or two? I can't. One and a half. Two. You can't have one and a half. <clears throat> two. We have the three. It's not between. I can't give you a number between so, one and two. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have, uh, I'll have one. I can't give you an integer between As one I've got and two. one to choose from. <clears throat> right, okay. So, yeah, these are your characters. Actually, do I have two? Oh, no, my profile just takes off two slots. Yeah. Yes. So, where it's written, where, where an item of weaponry is written twice on your equipment slot, that's just because it's a heavy weapon, it takes up two of your slots. Yeah. Uh, actually, could I, could I ask you two just to step outside? Yeah, of so I can explain to Tony in front of the yeah. microphone. Something that's relevant to his agenda. It only take a couple of moments. It's going to make me very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> My agenda might not yeah. be beneficial to them. Um, yeah, so the way that works is um, you don't actually suffer from panic stress or anything, but whilst you're not revealed as an android, mm-hmm. You play as a human. Yeah, so, so you still basically pretend. Exactly. Pretend. You do all the normal stuff. You will take stress. You will get yeah, yeah. all that. So if you take any damage, you'll bleed white, of course. And that'll be the point when they'll realise that you're an android. And then the rules change slightly. Your, some of your stats will change a little bit. Um, but we'll come to that at the point that you get revealed. When I do get revealed, can I say anything about my... You can say anything about the rest of your about your powers. Yeah, well, about my agenda. You can say about your agenda anytime you like. I'm trying to pretend I'm here to protect them. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you, whatever you please. Okay. But if you want to be specific about your agenda, then you can be. There's nothing. It's entirely up to you. Whether okay. you think whether you think they're going to support you or not in that. For the for the benefit of the tape, Tony's agenda is if you wish to read it out. Uh, I'm the company Android, and I need to escape with or secure a specimen. For future analysis, doesn't matter if I or anyone else survives. Cool. Thanks, guys. Come on in. The whole week, so. <clears throat> right, so could we please just briefly introduce ourselves? Okay. Not. Yep. Uh, I'm Drake. I'm a Marine. Um, as a Marine, I don't run when the going gets tough. We'll see about that. I crawl with broken legs. <laughs> Instead of panicking, I can turn my fear into aggression and use it as a weapon against my enemy. I can trigger different, more aggressive effects when I make a panic roll with my overkill of talent. And I look like I just came out of hypersleep. 
Intentionally, intentionally or unintentionally. Oh, intentionally. It was a, a very calculated look. Right. Um, I was Stoon. I'm a, the deputy and a mechanic. Uh, I'm a sort of grimy, with don't mess with me swagger. Um, I can push any skill roll based on strength twice and not just once. Although each push increases my stress by one. Uh, you don't want to tell you that, Doug, because that's my secret bit. Yeah, it would, it's entirely up to you whether you are open about your agenda or not. It doesn't. You're under no obligation to be open about your agenda. But it depends how how much you think it will hinder other players. Or, or how much they may the hinder you. Or might hinder you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, I'm Kurtz, I'm Marshal and Commanding Officer. Um, I can pull rank, which basically means I can roll command versus someone's manipulation to try and get them to do something that I want. Uh, even if it means them harm or danger, uh, but I get stressed doing it. I really want to kill one of the big ones. First big one we kill, C. I want to want to kill it. So, you know, don't weaken it, but don't kill it. Because <laughs> it's mine. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, your collective mission, guys. <clears throat> Although on the background, um, this is Hadley's Hope on LV426. <laughs> your colonists, uh, or maybe not, some of you, um, have lived here for a long time. Whilst most of you have day jobs, some of you have re- well, you've all enrolled in the Hadley's Hope Civil Police Militia, so you have a serving marine with you. The colony is jointly funded by the Wayne and Jutani Corporation and the Government of the United Americas. There is a management class of corporate types and government officials and the rest of the colonists make up the workforce. Um, you are pretty much what's left of the Hadley's Hope Defence Force. The basic situation is it's infection day plus five. Five days ago, a prospector called Russ Jordan came in, infected with something. He died, and some snake-like parasite was born from inside him. It disappeared into the guts of the base, and you spent many hours fruitlessly searching for it. Many people have been, more people have been infected, and many of these creatures are now roaming the base. But the situation has escalated rapidly in the last day or so. The last the base heard from the supervisor Simpson, who runs the base, was six hours ago, with a panicked call for all surviving colonists to head immediately to Block D2, where they're going to hold up and take stock of the situation, safety in numbers, perhaps. So that's the second floor, the upper floor of D Block. The base is now all but silent, except creaking machines and the occasional isolated scream or short-lived shout for help. Some think that barricading into one location is making it easy for the xenomorphs, like a turkey shoot, or waiting meekly for an inevitable execution. So your collective mission, um, you start in the command centre, which is block E, level 2. You're in operations in the command centre. Oh, down there. Yep. Um, Everything is going south, way, way south. Hunting the little aliens hasn't done any good, and the things have spiralled out of control. Supervisor Simpsons lost it and decided to hold up in D block, calling any and everyone back there. Marshal Kurtz thinks it's time to take the fight to the xenomorphs. Oh, There's yeah. still some ammo left, and if you're if you're to have any hope, haha, the irony, of rescue, <laughs> we must activate the emergency beacon. Whilst we're out and about, we ought to make sure any colonists we find are safe, whether or not they head for block D2 and Simpsons so called safety zone. You are gathered in Simpson's office, just off the main command room, which doesn't really matter where it is on the map. It is uh, the main that's command. that's command room. Simpson's office is there, and he just comes out onto the main command centre. Yeah, you've returned to command to draw breath and regroup. You've agreed that you need to take forward your your collective mission, and you have uh, taken stock of the gear you have remaining. The things you have remaining to 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 take with you, you've got one sentry gun with one reload, and you have these items here which you can hand out. You also have the weapons and the reloads that are listed on your account sheets already. So, who's got the sentry gun? What have we got then? Are you your Kurt? So um, the CO, yeah. Kurt. What have we got then? <clears throat> well, we've got three smoke flares, <clears throat> three seismic charges, and two motion detectors. Well, they could come in handy. They could indeed come in handy. Does the sentry take up slots in our inventory as well? To carry it, it takes two slots, yeah. <clears throat> and it takes a turn, which is 
between five and ten minutes to set it up. So in this game, you have rounds, which are between five and ten seconds, turns, which are between five and ten minutes, and shifts, which are about eight hours. How can you guys carry so much? Training. Come on, <laughs> I can only carry six incumbents worth of items, and you guys could both carry ten, apparently. Because yeah. your strength are different. Because you're wimpy. <laughs> it's t- like typical with like, officers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should definitely get a motion detector as the commander. Well, shall we? Um, as the uh, marine, I imagine I'll be taking points, so I probably should have a motion detector as well. Yeah, I'm not going to argue. Oops, sorry. I can only. Do these take up? That takes up one slot. These two should take up one uh, slot. No, I yeah, think they all count. They all count as small items. I think. Okay. Oh, okay. So the motion detector you can have either strapped to your wrist or strapped to a gun. Okay, and then you, one of you two, carry the sentries. Yeah, I'll take. Do you want, if you want to carry the sentry gun. Well, I think given that you're the roughy tufty warrior type, it probably makes more sense if I carry it. Okay. Because then you're ready for action then. Otherwise, you've got this bloody big gun sort of like strapped around your neck. Oh, I can, I can right manage that. So <laughs> and it says text two slots, you say? Yep. Yeah. So, yes, it's sentry gun, two slots, yep. Yeah. And as I said, if that comes in effectively a case that you can strap over your back, which takes a turn yeah. to set up. set up. Yeah. You do have, um, I think, for the sentry gun, you have a additional reload. You have one extra reload. Do so we have to? So it's got one, one in it. it when so it it's got out. one in it plus one. Yeah. Right. Now basically, it will reload itself if you set it up with the reload. Okay. And it'll then just burn three, two. Well, how wide is its angle of of fire, or how wide an angle? Forty five degrees. Either way. But you set it up in a direction. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You set it to far on. Mm. Your certain settings, yeah. Movement, size of movement, heat, um, heat, infrared, yeah. And then, uh, and then you leave it. Every fucking Can you not set it for acid blood? Well, I wouldn't imagine. How would it detect the acid blood? I don't know. I'm actually asking you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can tell me how you might set it for acid blood, I'll consider it. Perhaps there's a whiff of um, of pH. I don't know which way around this is now. Is it pH six or five or four? We're wafting down the corridor. I think it'd be a lot lower than that. Considering well, the gun. Not, yeah. only one or two yeah. lower than that. I don't think the gun has got a olfactory sensor. As it not. It. <laughs> it shoots out litmus paper. <laughs> at everything it sees, and if it, uh, then it shoots a light in it to see the colour. See the colour, and then if it's red enough, it fires. <laughs> and if it doesn't, somebody needs to kick up their arse for not actually designing it. But it's done such. that though. Obviously, right. yeah. three hundred aliens have gone by. <laughs> right. So you are in uh, the command centre. And you need to turn on the emergency beacon, which is where. Well, well, you can try and turn it on from here. Well, let's try and turn it on from here then. Click the button. I, I would suggest. <clears throat> Do we start with any stress this time? Like no. Start with none. Start with no stress. Great. <clears throat> <laughs> Fine. Okay. Probably. Uh, who's got probably some? Right. Right. So, um, you can quickly see there is actually no way to initiate the beacon from here. Right. No, I th- um, look at that one, I mean. The problem seems to lie with the transmitter relay circuits at the comms array up by the landing pad in the air traffic control centre. Right, we're going to have to go all the way out there. Outside. Yeah. Right. Um, replacing the transmitter relay board at the array should solve the problem and allow the signal to be initiated from the air traffic control centre, which is next to the landing pad. Right, okay. Um, as a mechanic, would I know where the spare... I would presume I would know where spare bits are. You would, absolutely. Or at least um, I could look it up on the, what is it, on the... Um, Wikipedia. Uh, on Wikipedia? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the, the inventory on the computer right. says where things are. You, you are pretty sure that the maintenance bay down on the sub-level will have what you need. Right. Including tools and a spare relay board, which is right. about, you know, you know it's yeah. about a foot and a half by a foot and a half. That's about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we don't want to split up. No. That would be... Right, well, may I suggest that we... Go down to the maintenance so, bay. Yeah, so the maintenance bay downstairs. is where? It's downstairs. Even further down. Is it, is it yeah. in the it's sub somewhere? So you're currently on the upper floor of the base, for level yeah. two, yeah, it is. and it's in the in the basement. So, so that's the level level. this stairwell, is it? There to there to there. Are you not the you're not the wrong way around? It's not got the map. No, no I think no, the map's no, no, the right no, way. No, up. No, yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's the top floor near where okay. we are. 
So that stairwell is, uh, yeah, exactly. it's the, it's the south, it's the south lock uh, stairwell, and that does come out down there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Should we head down that way? Yes. Um, so our, our objective is maintenance bay, mm. and then uh, air traffic 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 out to the um, which is on the that's on the ground level, isn't it? Or level zero, level one. <laughs> Something we could do is from maintenance bay. As we go to lead, we could go to vehicle bay and get a vehicle over there. We could do. Is it? Do we need one for that distance? It might be less likely to get attacked by any of these no. creatures. Well, no, I think the big vehicle might have to be more noticeable. Than more noticeable, but only more protected. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's the thought. You you do know um, that the control center where you are has. You know, it, it, quite a lot of other controls. It, it doesn't have a direct connection to the air traffic control center. It was never set up. Um, Simpson was too too cheap and just decided that whenever you needed a bit of air traffic control, we'd send somebody there to fire up the the, the air traffic control center. Um, <laughs> you do know that the air traffic control center, as well, is usually powered down unless there is a need for it to power it. It's got its own generator. Um, so is the ge- the generator is over there. Then? Yeah. The generator is, is over there. You'd know as a mechanic, Roger, Alice Doom, that the generator is on the first level of the air traffic control centre, and then there's a, a control room on, mm-hmm. on the top floor there. Also, from command here, you do have access to other things such as um, security systems, cameras, Cam- that cameras. kind of stuff. Can we look through all the cameras of the base, see if we can see any... Yeah, or at least look through you know, what our, our route. route is going yeah. to be to see if there's any... So, so look at the south east stairwell. Okay, um, who is ha- who is looking at it? Because the, the CCTV control panels are quite badly damaged, but you might be able to get some of it Probably working. not me. Well, I've got Comtech 1 and whatever it is, is 2, so I've got 3. So uh, I've got... Would it be Comtech? It's Comtech, yeah. I've got Comtech 1 and which is 3, so I get yeah, 4. So the best of it. So you've got four, right? You're back with four. Yeah. yeah. And awesome. you could offer assistance. Yeah. Give him an extra dice. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do I do you just roll it? Just roll it. Just roll it. Just roll it. So uh, it's just five normal dice and no, we've got no stress. Just no extra dice at this no, point. No extra dice at this point. Uh, so I get two successes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You managed to fire up, fire up a few a few cameras. Flicking through. Uh, I mean, there's obviously quite a lot that come up blank as you're flicking through the system, um, and a few that have been. Are still on, but they're obviously pointing at the ceiling, or that something's happened to them to be in the wrong direction. But things that you do see that give you a view of inside and outside the base, you do see quite a lot of carnage. Um, some terrible scenes of carnage, and Tony, you get a point of stress for that. Um, there's a door to an empty, uh, empty habitation quarters hanging off its hinges, with what appear to be acid burns on the wall and the floor, clothes strewn and blood splattered. Uh, the location of that camera is mass housing block on the sub level. There's a long deserted corridor with debris strewn all over and light strobing as they flicker on and off. And in the far distance, you can see some dark movement, a slow and a slow shadow moving. You can hastily zoom in on it, but all you do is catch the bloody remains of a person being dragged slowly out of sight. Mass, where mass that one is. And this is in housing block A1, which is on the first floor out by the north airlock. And then you see movement on another camera, a camera showing block B1 on the main street, and you get your first real view of, of one of these creatures. Now, some of you had seen, or at least seen some of the footage of the of the snake-like thing. This thing is fucking enormous. Multiple sizes bigger than that. It's How big compared to a person? It's about the size of a person. Mm, that one's they've, mine. they've grown then. And it steps through the camera, <coughs> seemingly sort of sniffing the air. It's, it's, it's long, elongated head is kind of pointed up and sort of looking around. And then it slowly steps out of the camera view, its tail sort of languidly carving a, a shape in the air as it moves out of view. Out of view, which direction? It's heading south. Wow. That was from on Main Street, which is Main Street. You know, is, the, is this long corridor here? Yeah. Basically, heading down. Are we so still? Are we, are we, are we about to be we going down. moved yet? Are we still in the? No, you're still in, 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 in operation. <laughs> Can I to find anything in the inventory that's alkaline? 
Do we know that they've got? Or we've killed some of the young. Well, we've just seen acid ones, burns. We? So, um, where are we? Uh, you can, you can, it'll t- if you want to spend five minutes having a search, you can have a, you can have a, you can have a look. I think this might be an idea. It gives us something as a. But is it? Is it? Would it be better to search when we're there rather than? Well, like if I know where they are, then I think. No, because if we don't know where it is, then we could spend hours searching. Whereas if I'm searching on the computer, it's only five minutes. I'd like to. Do, I, I I think it'd be worthwhile spending five minutes. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll spend five minutes. Okay. Make a make a. And this is what searching the inventory. Yeah. Okay. So that's com. So that's, that'll be a context. So that's role. three, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I got a one. It nope. doesn't matter unless three it's three or four. No. Now, the, the, right, okay. the inventory is all a bit sharp. Okay, You're right. struggling to actually find the right files. There's some nope. corruption. Okay, on. it's one for them. Do we know, is there, like a, is there like a lab around somewhere there might be some... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, medical don't... stuff is always sort of nearby. So medical is on your level here. Mm. And there are geo laboratories which you were turned over into um, researching the alien laboratory on the floor below you in E-Block. Down here. Yeah. Right, you turned over to what? Researching the, the aliens, the xenomorphs. Right, so that's sort of like home for them, ish, potentially. Well, potentially, but so yeah, so so E block here, this side of E block, the okay. um, east side of E block, on the ground floor is the geo labs and the doctor's office. On the other side is what they call the boiler room. It's sort of the engine room, mm-hmm. um, generator rooms. Uh, where they run the systems utility, the, the bases utilities, and you are basically directly above above that. Medical is on the same floor as you, mm-hmm. uh, at the north end of that block. Right. Yeah, somewhere. Yep. And so our top uh, of this our, map. Our mission should be should send be, this, send off the sorry. Just because medical should be marked on the map. I think. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So our mission is actually to set this this um, warning beacon going. But at the same point, try and protect anybody who's yeah who we haven't seen yet. Who you because, assigned? Because there's nobody, nobody we've seen, is there? Yeah. Not that's it's not that's alive. still alive. Not that seems but then anyone yeah. who's probably still alive is hiding. So if we haven't seen him, it's a good thing. Or he's been cocooned and. I don't think we know that they do that. No, you probably don't know that they do that at this point. You know that the face hugger things happen, but you don't. No much else about them. <clears throat> Do we want to search the medical area? If there's anything we think we could use as a medical weapon supplies, them? could also be useful. I think it might yeah, be a yeah. good idea just to get some. You know, and it's not too not far, far away. away. Okay. Yeah. So oh. where was me? <clears throat> uh, well, we had to go out into this office and then out into the corridor. And it's so we'll have to go up, left, up, left, up. <laughs> so okay. There's not a door apparently. There is. There is. is. is there? Just, okay. uh, yeah, the map's quite small. So, the medical, you come out of the, yeah, you come out of comms, turn left, and it's the first door on the left takes you to the medical complex. Okay. And in there you've got the, uh, sort of the, the consulting room, um, and then there's a, uh, a quarantine chamber at the back, a booth at the back. Um, okay, so I you... Have a, okay, yep. Yeah. Are you strolling like it's a nice Sunday, or I are you no. don't think um, we will be. No, I'm going to. I'm getting my smart gun. Is it ready? Holding it. Loaded smart gun. Yeah. Okay, um, your say two smart gun. Your smart gun is one of those that's strapped around your waist in Aliens. Oh, yeah. Well, a mini gun, um, like a mini gun. Yeah. Oh, right. So it's it's difficult to manoeuvre it in the confines of this of the base. It's not impossible by any means, but uh, you know it's quite long. It's alright to point down a corridor. Yeah. Okay, I'll, in that case, I'll, I will keep that stowed and I'll have my pistol ready then to react a bit more quickly. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I've got the incinerator unit ready. Okay, I'll. So is that basically like a flamethrower? Yeah. Thing? I'll just. What I had last time, it was completely useless. It's because you missed. <laughs> 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 if you hit, then you, you know. I'll, I'll just have my revolver out and uh, I think it's taken point. Well, I'll shoot my will. And you can cover me. Because I'm the important one, I'll say anybody. <laughs> so I've got my flame gun point at your back, has <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> Away no. from my back, preferably. Um, okay, okay, so. Continue. Stay alert. 
Uh, so you are I'm, going to be. It's going quite nice to be watching what's coming behind us as we're walking forward. Yep, cool. So you come on, we'll try and be stealthy. Now. <coughs> yep. Yeah. So you, you you step carefully out of out of Cult Command Center, and I mean the the lighting in this place is working, but it's not working brilliantly, so that it's mm-hmm. all quite dingy. It's all flashing in a slightly unnerving manner. It is. <laughs> but with occasional <laughs> fizzle as You've well. Been here before. Yeah. Um, Little sparks and. So, do you do a role for so I, I think you need to make a role for mobili- mobility of the individual who is the worst of the three of you. So I've got five altogether. I've got five. I've got five. Okay, so it's um, whichever one of you draw, wants to roll five dice. Well, I, from, I didn't do very well last time. So. Yeah, if, I, if I roll, I'm stressed. I'll be rolling a stressed die as well. But you couldn't possibly absolutely fuck it up. No, although the fact that I've got the stress die, does that mean I'm actually not the worst because I'll get an extra die? You'll get an extra die, yeah. But if the rule is the, the worst person at the, at the skill does the role, the fact that I've got that extra die, does that actually make me not the worst? That's person? a very good point. That's a very good ruling point. Um, I, I, It's a skill thing. So I, I think you can decide amongst yourselves. Which one of us is going to fuck up the stealth roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think. Well, I'm quite happy to go roll for it. Who else wants to? I mean, I it's, a, it's an interesting more. point um, that I will have to bring up with Thomas. But I would, I would argue that if you wanted to, you could do it and use your stress dice. If you want to use the extra stress dice, I guess it's more chance of success, but risk of more getting more stress as well. So at this stage. Might be better not to, do you think? Nah, I think do it. Uh, okay. Uh, now I'm going to make a ruling, and the ruling is that if you want to do it and use stress, you can, because your skill is equally Still low, as, equally or equally high, high as anybody else's. But would, would you be allowed to do it without the stress? No, die? you have right. to roll the stress. Die. Okay, right. Yeah. No, no, you don't get to choose mm-hmm. to roll the stress. No, no, if you don't want to roll the stress, die, one of you two can roll it. I don't care. To be so, no, I, I think that's an involved. I'll let you let Look you it. Up. So uh, I've got two successes, uh, no stress. Really good. I've got three successes. So it's only three three successes. successes. Okay. Wow. Stop the as fuck. Okay, yeah, you you go down that corridor silently. You can hear little sort of noises in the kind of structure of the place, but nothing close. Nothing shoddy work. And in my bowels. Nothing obviously <laughs> in the bow in your in your bowels. In my bowels, yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you uh, you reach medical. Uh, you can go into the um, the um, room there. Is there a, is there a uh, window that we can look through before we go in? Uh, the door is open. Yeah. The medical. Right. Yeah, just gonna go in, looking around quite carefully. Yep. Okay. Um, so medical uh, consists of the medical examination room, the doctor's office, and a quarantine booth around the back. Uh, the place is a total shambles. There are empty cabinets flung open. Um, some of them are overturned in what you can only assume was a mad scramble of colonists looking for medical supplies. Yeah, so somebody's been here before us, then. Um, the same yeah. with us. The usually ordered equipment is scattered like confetti at a wedding. Um, as you search around, the door to the quarantine room you see is open. Uh, inside, there is a there's a table, um, an examination table, and there's a, well, what appears to be a dead body on the table of a, of a, of a man. There's no obvious sign of wounds, but he looks pretty dead from where you are, presumably looking. So there's a big window that looks into the mm. into the quarantine bit and a door. So the door is open, you can just look through the window as well. There are also several specimen tubes against one of the walls. In the quarantine room. In the quarantine room. Um one of well, two of them contain one of those dead those spidery creatures which is which are dead. There are two of them in fact. Contain one, so there's two dead ones. So the little kind of the first ones that we The little across. skittery things with the long tails, yeah. Um that we managed to kill. That but, sorry, the, that have been captured. That have been captured, yes. Yeah, or killed, yeah. There's also a dead one or one that looks dead anyway on the floor. And there is a specimen tube which most certainly has got a live one in it. And it's scrabbling its legs against the Against the glass, it seems to be able to detect that there's somebody there. It's getting quite agitated. So the dead ones, what what kind of container are they in? They're in glass containers. They're in yeah, glass specimen tubes. And how big are they? The 
There's some tubes. The tubes are about a foot in diameter. St- cylinders standing on, yeah, on their end. <coughs> not easily <laughs> carryable. They are carryable, uh, but uh, it will be two. Yeah. It will be two slots to carry one. I don't see the advantage of carrying one, especially one that has a live one in. Because well, if we accidentally break it, if we get off, if we get off here, it'll be useful to have a dead specimen. Okay, but let's take it with us. Oh yeah, yeah. If I it's think dead, why don't we just take the specimen and ignore the well, jar? And I guess it because it's it still has acid for blood. You think? You don't want to, you know, fall over and crush it in your pocket. <laughs> it might go uh, quite badly. Sure, if one of you wants to take one, I've never. No, I don't want to take one at all. Yeah, I'll take one. <coughs> so I'm going to go uh, in there as quickly as possible. I'm going to go and pick up one of his glass containers with one of the dead ones in. Okay. Yep. Bring it out. I could. Quantum. I could pull rank and get you to eat one. <laughs> you could try. Mm, yeah, it try, says so. even if it means harm or danger. You start to pass a test, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I think that you might be on some serious negatives for that one. Yeah, I, I know. I was just if it's pointing out how stupid. Uh, it's like you know, cut your cut your penis off. <laughs> for no good reason. It's an order. <laughs> Is it, sir? Yeah, good. Exactly. Well done. Well, I am your bondsman, and I must obey. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, made a small prick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good old black added quotes, eh? <laughs> Can't beat them. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. <laughs> I'm going to keep an so eye on So I'm going to I'm basically it. keeping an eye as far as possible on the the jar with the live one in, and I'm going to go for the, the dead one that's furthest away from that. And I'm also going to try and get an eye on this dead body on the slab as well, because obviously we know that these things have been implanted inside bodies and then burst out we know that don't we so you do know that yeah uh, um, there is a dead about. face like a lying on the floor oh yeah that's probably you think it's dead anyway oh there's one that's not moving that seems to be dead on the floor uh, I'll keep an eye on that one as well well does that mean this guy's been <clears throat> impregnated by it well, almost certain I mean why else to be honest why else would he be in the quarantine area well then do we Put a few rounds in him. If you've got medical ability, whatever the skill is, med- medical aid, you could check to see if he's dead or not. I have very limited medical ability. So I. I have no actual training in it, but we've got three. If you include the um, the, the key, the attributes. Yeah, well. I've got four in the attributes, but no. Yeah, I've, I've got attributes. two. In, you see, yeah. you're the better one, best one. Uh, two and three. I said, put it in his head. It's the kindest thing. But you're a marine. Well, the head's not going to kill the thing that's inside him, though. No, but I've got some that might. What, a flamethrower? Yep. Yeah. Put a seismic charge inside him. <laughs> Can I, use... Super. Super. I might try and do some medical aid or see if this guy is. Do some medical aid, resurrect the dead. Well, well you know, I'm, no, I'm, no I'm just going to. First thing I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on any movement around here. I'm just basically going for one of these guys with a dead one in, picking up and getting it out of the room. Yeah. So we could just. You can, so find, you can find a bag or something that you can put it in. So you can so then cover your shoulder with something to carry it. Like yeah. a classic carry bag. <laughs> Not quite, but there will be, there'll be a container that you could do it just to put over your shoulder. One of those hazardous material waste bags. Yeah, precisely. Almost like we could just shut and lock the door to the quarantine room and just leave it. Why would we unlock it? Should we just want to lock it? Yeah, yeah lock well, the it. Door, the door's so open. Close it. The door's yeah, yeah, yeah. open. But well, we could shut it and lock it. But and just leave it. Did you want to roll for? Are, yeah. you, are you just trying to see for life signs? If there's any movement, okay, I'm going to stand there, not... basically covering him in the game, watching yeah. for movement with this dead one. Even if it's not the person, watching thing. for any signs that the the one that's alive in a jar is cracking yeah. the jar and okay. might be getting out. It looks um, a bit agitated in the jar, but it doesn't seem to be doing any any damage to the jar. And also, kind of watching. But yeah, looking for movement. Keep an eye on the, the dead guy. Just okay. in case there's any. Anything and you're you're history. checking you're checking for what life signs and for any movement inside his body. Yeah. Okay. Make a medical roll then. There's a nothing. You can't detect any movement. You think he's well, you can't detect any life signs either. But you wouldn't you wouldn't bet your life on. Uh, well, that's maybe the wrong thing to say. You wouldn't, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't bet the house. You wouldn't bet the house on on being right. 
you think you're well, a, a, a medical professional might be able to detect a, a sign of life, but you haven't. But you don't know. He seems dead. But there's, it's not an obvious exploding there's no, chest. No, 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 no. Absolutely, there's no signs of obvious violence on him at all. Flame through him. Probably. Well, nuke the him, in the flame nuke him from orbit. I mean, that's a bit extreme considering we're also standing right next to him. So your flamethrowers presumably have limited fuel. Yeah, but not even fuel. So limits. do we want to use that on this? Well, I'll just just, I'll well, just close and lock the door to the quarantine room. That doesn't, doesn't stop the problem. <laughs> well, it does. Well, no, because it does if you burst out. Well, I think into the... what we've seen, I don't think we we can't stop the problem. Can we? We can just try and survive no, we it. Can slow it down. For all we know, if we hadn't been doing anything, they could have got to this stage days ago. Okay, John Frank for him. I think. Commander, oh, I think. Thanks, Roger. Okay. Yes, thank you, Roger. Either way, if this guy's alive or not, it's still the better thing to do. Yeah, if he's alive now, if he's got one of these things inside him, he's he, gonna die. He's not gonna be alive very long. It'll be a not the most unpleasant way to go. I mean, I don't know if death by fire is better or worse than that, but either way, it's. Well, we could just put a bullet in his head and then Never burn the body time. to kill yeah. her, make sure we kill the thing. Yeah, we could. Is, it, is anybody. <laughs> are you actually inside the um, containment room? Yes. yes. Is there any evidence from the body? Does it look like somebody's just burst through his no. chest or anything? No. no. Right. There's no sign of violence on him at all that okay. Connor, Connor could find. And even a failed roll would have noticed a hole in yeah. the chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> you're completely blind. Oh, no, 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 Right, so there's a good chance there is something in there then. Well, it's I wouldn't imagine he strangled that thing on the floor next yeah. to him to death. Well, I don't know. No one's ever tried it. But we know that the, the things died not long after Commander, are we, uh, impregnating the thing. Shall I? Yeah. Put a bullet in him. I'll put a bullet in and, him. Uh, BANG! And then, you uh, put a bullet through his head. The, yes. the, the noise echoes around the silence and quiet of the room very, very loudly. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and then burn the chest. I don't want anything coming out of this man. Right, okay, so everybody's behind me. Yeah, I'll stand back. Flame okay. through the. Uh, the, the guy on Don't the use more fuel than you need to, just to Yeah, okay, um so I I can't see how I could have missed last time because it's a short range weapon. <laughs> because of because you're a stress. So I think Okay, I am gonna make you make a roll, Roger. Mm-hmm. But you get plus three to your dice. Because it's a mobile. Because it's a oh, can I have a look? Right, so this is where's so it'll be a combat. it'll be a ranged combat roll. Right, so that's six. And you get plus three, and any bonus for the incinerator. No, no bonus for the incinerator. So that's six plus three, you said. Yep, doesn't matter which dice. Just... I think I'll just do it like those. Six, three. Uh, one success. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You, you blast him. I am going to give you a point of stress for that. Four. It's pretty horrendous if he is still alive. He's not. I'm pretty sure he's not alive. I know, because he blew his head off. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure at this point no, okay, he's not no, still alive. No, take that stress back, Roger. I won't give you that stress. No, that's fair enough. Oh, no, good point. Maybe instead. I should give it to Tony instead. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you're a soldier. I think I think it was there. It's a merciful thing. Not just a soldier. It's a courageous thing. And I only have MP of two, so I probably don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. So that's in real life. What about your character? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as you come out, the I assume you close the. Can, sorry, are we leaving the live one behind? We're not going to try and kill it. We could kill it. We could. Is there a reason to keep Mind it? Mind we've already. I think we should get out quickly. Actually. Yeah, I think, especially having made an noise, is why I tried some unwanted attention, probably. Moving yeah, on. I probably should have thought on. about that before I gave the order to yeah. shoot him in the head. Yeah, so they're, they're obviously there's a huge amount of fire. Uh, a few seconds later, you get a needed 
did it, did it, oh, the did fire it, alarm. did it, <laughs> yeah, did it, about and that. the sprinklers come on. <laughs> um, there's suddenly quite a lot of noise going on here. <laughs> Actually, that might be good to our <coughs> Well, let's get out. Yeah, sure you should make the flames go a lot less useful, though. Okay, what are you doing, guys? Uh, do we want to run? Can we walk quickly? Yeah, let's get away from... Yeah, because... Let's, let's walk quickly. Hopefully... Away from this, where this noise is. does notice it's just going to come straight here and ignore a few footsteps. So are we going to head for the... Are we finished on the, the level? stairwell? Are we just head for the stairwell? Yeah. Which stairwell are you heading for? The southeast one. Yeah, okay. Double time. <laughs> okay, are you are you are you running? Are you? No, I think we're we're walking walking quickly. Reasonably briskly. Yeah. So you're not trying to stealth. We're not trying to stealth, but we're not trying to We're not trying to make as much noise as possible. Bear in mind there's all these alarms going off, so that's gonna mask some yeah, of the noise okay, we make. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's fair enough. Uh I would still like a a mobility roll, please, from one of you. Ooh, these are lost on okay. Slow it again. But I'll give you plus three. Plus three. There's a lot of noise. So, okay, make two rolls. One at plus three and one at normal. Okay. Including my stress die on both. Including a stress die on both. Okay, so this is my plus three roll. Oh, sorry, I get no successes in there. I get no... You could push it. <clears throat> you could push it, yep. Do I take a, another stress? Will we take another point of stress for pushing it? To be honest, I don't particularly want to build up my stress too quickly, so I'm not going to push it. Okay. Is there another roll without the plus three? Yeah? Yep. <clears throat> That's it. Also, no successes. Do you want to push that? Probably don't. Um, so you get an extra stress die as well. It makes it stresses and uh, one on the stress line. Okay, so you, so it's a panic. So roll <laughs> um, roll for panic ten. Remember, it's um one d six plus your current stress. Jeez. Now my overkill talent. It kicks in if you roll eleven or more. I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so but you I, can't right now. So. So d six plus. My stress, yeah? Yeah. So I have seven. Seven. Okay, nervous twitch. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in near range, which is up to five meters, which is going to be both of you, goes up by one. So I think what's happened here is as he was trying to come away, Tony has tripped over probably, I think, the the, the weight of the, the package on his shoulder, which... You should have written down on your thingy tone an extra two. The alien in the, the jar. The dead alien in the jar has kind of swung off your shoulder and unbalanced you. You've fallen over. It's made a right, right clattering noise. And at that very moment, the fire alarm siren, siren just stops dead. And all you've got, you can hear, other part from the noise that Tony's making is the, the, the last sort of dripping of the. Of the, of, the, of the sprinkler systems as they finish finish the job. Can't hear the fire anymore. You can hear clanking and scuttling noises behind and in front of you. That's not good. The <coughs> scuttling is kind of behind you. The sort of louder clanking is in front of you as you're heading south. So, so the scuttling, does that sound like... Smaller things. I would it's well, it's probably yours, actually. If you want to head, head north and then go to different stairs, try to head, head, head to the office block. Oh no, so it'd be the office block stairway. What are you doing, guys? Or can I do a motion sensor? Though? You can. <clears throat> you don't have to roll. You just use a. Well, can, you yeah, use the you motion roll sensor. To see if it uses you it. roll three dice if your power is three, and any ones reduce the power. Yeah, so one. So, so you're going down to two. Um, yeah. Use white. Use white cubes for your for your charges left. Um, okay, let me give me the map, and then I will I will mark on it where you pick up motion. Now you're indoors, so you go up to four zones, and you are currently the half. You're 
halfway between medical and command centre doorways. Does that detect only our current floor? Does it detect? No, it can <laughs> detect <laughs> higher or lower. So, reminding the health and safety risk of having pins sticking out. <laughs> uh, that is what you see on your motion sensor. So, the stuff kind of behind us is on the floor below. Is it, or is that. Which way? We, we're facing this <coughs> way. Actually. Yeah. So, the stuff behind us is the floor below us. And there's a lot of stuff on that floor below us. Do we head to the door stair- stairwell? We stairwell? could. Yeah, head to the door stairwell. Mm. Hopefully, that's bypass. So, your motion sensor is going. Bidip! 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 Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> bidip. let's go that way. <laughs> Okay. Quietly this time. Let's try. So yeah, okay, you're heading north. north right. Okay. So now we're heading for this stairwell. The right. command crew block stairwell. Yep, okay. So you need to make another mobility roll then, guys. Do you do it? Uh, no, I've got three stress now. So oh, I've got, well, I've got one stress. Well, I've got a guard mine. Yeah, I think we've, both got, we've all got the same oh, mobility okay. There's roll five roll. dice and your stress die. Stress is black. A black dice, yeah. So I thought I was black, I am trying to picked it up. One, two successes. As you start moving down the corridor where you are, you can hear something big behind you. We can't see anything. Can't see it. It's around the corner. It's growling. It's close. But it's not it's not immediately coming after you. You make it a distance down the corridor. So you're on, this is level two. Okay, there is a bulkhead halfway down that corridor. And you reach that bulkhead, and you can still hear the noise of that creature, or whatever it is, the <laughs> south end of that corridor. It doesn't seem to have moved any closer from your motion sensor. Fair enough. Could be. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, open this door. The bulkhead is open. Oh, okay. Well, yep. let's just okay. go through it. <laughs> okay. We seen it behind us. Yes. Let's do that. Get on it, whoever's best at closing doors. doors. <laughs> There's a button, you just press and it will, it will shut. It does make a noise as it, as, it, as it closes. And your sensor goes beep, 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 as that starts moving north along that corridor. Okay. Is there a window in this bulkhead? No. I can't see. Let's uh, just carry on. Let's move. Let's pretend that hasn't happened and just carry on. Yes, yeah, so this bulkhead, how big is the, how thick is the door? Um, the bulkhead, I mean, a bulkhead door is going to be pretty big and strong, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's not like an armoured, you know, external airlock by any means, but it's, it's a relatively, it's not, it's not like the door here that's, you know, made out of some, <laughs> Would that a three year old could blow over? Exactly. So you're moving? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you still going stealthily? Yeah. I think we should try and still go mm. stealthily. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's another mobility roll then. You should have roll this time. time. Yeah. Although, actually, I think the mistake I'm making here well, is that the, mi- the mobility roll. Should Sorry, be, should be for a turn rather than for what is probably going to be about thirty seconds or a minute. A turn you know, being ten five, five to ten minutes. Yeah. But yeah, there's an alien on the other side of that door. No, there's somebody on the other side of that door. So I think that's it's a straight nothing. Maybe you want to push that. I think I will. Okay. Uh, Take another stress cube. die, another stress cube. I think we want to um, get out of here. Um, Odd, still a nothing. Okay, as you're going down uh, down there, the uh, the bulkhead. Well, something fucking hard hits it. Clash. Okay, would somebody roll a d6 for me? Six. Six. Oh, it's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is. Okay. So, something hits the door with an enormous amount of force. 
Oh, oh fuck. We've only to see what alien was. It's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the door is hit so hard, the metal bends inwards. Some of the hinges and the connecting bits on the side break. You can see light from the other side coming through with some kind of shadow behind it. Whatever it is, has hit that door. Like it's a very hot. Like a fucking real. Yeah, like that's pretty rail. bad. Let's uh, let's run. <laughs> okay, well let's move further up the corridor, and I can turn around and get my smart gun ready, my big gun. Be pointed. We don't need to particularly move us. We know where it's coming from. I'll just point down the corner. As soon as there's anything, I'll shoot it. You can go into what's called Overwatch. I will go into Overwatch. I'll be. I'll. What's the range? It's long range. So what's that in kind of uh, hundred term? meters? I think. Or further. I think short range is. So, arm's length is arm's length, near is up to 5, short is 25, long is going to be 100, extreme is 300 or something. So okay, so is that well the optimum within, range? Well within your range, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go basically go 100 metres up the corridor. Okay, you probably can't because it's the corridor isn't that okay, long. Okay, I'll go probably as far. Bit, you can go about the 30 or 40 metres up the corridor. I'll go as far up the corridor as I can. Maybe 50 at the most. Then, and basically turn around with my smart gun ready, pointing in over as soon as I see them. Yep. So I'm going to... What are you two doing? Um, I suggest yourself. you get behind me. Sorry? Crapping yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's a free action. <laughs> <laughs> you have a slow You're very fast, kind. You have a slow and a fast action still. <laughs> that happens when you gonna, want to do I'm going to be following, you know, following yeah, behind Yeah, I'll probably get behind you. And then get behind you my... at the end of the corridor, wherever we, as far as we can get. Yep. Yeah, yeah basically with, there's, with a, there's, a, there's, a bulkhead, there's another bulkhead at the end of the corridor with through which is the stairwell. Right. But that bulkhead is shut. But you can get to that bulkhead, yeah. Um, can I try and get that bulkhead open while they're in Overwatch or whatnot? You, you can. So let's just see how quickly the alien destroys the door. Uh, Tony, can you roll, or somebody could roll another d6, please, for its second attack on the. It's a three. Three. Okay. It's having, having hit the door at some pace, it now appears to have grabbed the. Crunching metal is trying to yank it out of its. It's trying out, to put it the wrong way. way. It's already pushed it in that way. Now it's trying to fix the door. It's two to eight. Basically, the door is kind of hanging on by a hinge now, and you can see. Oh, yeah, you can start to see this thing. I think you will take an extra point of stress for seeing this alien for the first time. It's enormous. It's bigger than a man. It's got spikes and sharp things, it's got talons, there's a tail, there's teeth, it's torn this door off, which is something that you would take with a torch probably 10 minutes to do uh, in the space of about 30 seconds. What I'm imagining is it's like the, the, the scene in Helm's Deep where they've got the archers ready, it's like, hold, hold, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. so like the old man yeah. shaking and he's about to let go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Connor, um, you can then press the button for the hatch behind you yeah. if you wish. I press um, the button. Yep, yeah, that door opens. You did check your motion sensor before you opened it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, you didn't. And uh, that could be your action for your slide action for the next round. <laughs> um, so Tony, you're in Overwatch. You open the door, Roger. I'm sort of in Overwatch with the flamethrower ready. With the incinerator. Yeah, okay. but I want the to be... The not got that good range there. No, no, that's why I'm waiting. That's yeah. I, what I don't want to do is get in his way. Okay. Oh, actually, hang on. Uh, roll one more D6, somebody, please. Three. Three. So the Three. alien... The alien has kind of finished with the door and has torn it off and... It's a bit of a lump out of it. Yeah, I mean, the door has been totally destroyed in the space of about 30 seconds. And then the alien kind of crawls, comes through. It's because this, yeah, this is like seven foot high. This thing is the, cor the, one we the saw corridor the is seven foot high. This creature is taller than that, so it's kind of using its claws to sort of walk down the corridor. You're an overwatch. That's you may why fire. Uh, I will I'll fire. Mother then. Fire. Thank you very much. So your weapon, uh, I yeah, think, it's not got a card. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, so it is the smart gun. Did I? Did I why didn't I? I must have put it on bloody list. I didn't, but I, uh, why didn't I do that? That's stupid. Was it got stats on there? Yes. It does, but I don't think... So I think the smart gun can do... Um, uh, it's got some special abilities. So I think it can do full auto. If you wish to go full auto. 
M fifty six A two smart gun. So, so ten. You don't get any bonus for Overwatch, but you do get to fire uh, immediately. Yep. You get plus two for the gun. Yep. It's armor piercing, which halves the armor, and it's full auto. So if you go full auto, you get another plus two to your base dice. Yeah. You get one point of stress for doing so. It empties your clip, and it could hit a second target if there was one. But it'll give you two extra base dice. Okay. On top of the two bonus you already get for the weapon. I probably won't then at this point. Uh, I don't have okay. to stress particularly. Okay. Stress is building up. Mm. So, as, so as Vasquez said in Aliens, <laughs> let's rock! So... I, I don't want to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tone. Uh, so, I get seven base die for my range combat ability. I get two for the yep. and I get four of the pistol shots. Yeah, and this is not the time you want to roll for panic. Well, well I think we know how bad a panic it is. We all know what's going to happen, don't we? And then, come on, don't, don't panic. We had enough of that. Panic, don't panic. Well, panicking. Ah. Uh, I. So three, I need to get one to six. So I get three. Four, four successes. Four successes. But if. I have, I have a okay, if so you roll, roll your dice and three add. or less. Yeah. Three. So seven. Seven. Okay, nervous twitch. Your stress level, everyone's mm -hmm. stress level goes up by one. Okay. But it's not an accurate. Really. But you've hit with four dice. Yeah. So your weapon does three, three damage. damage. Each additional point can do an extra point of damage. Six. Or you can do another stunt. Some other kind of stunt you might want to do against it. I think I just want to kill it. So are you going for six damage? I think I'll just go for damage. Right. Okay. There is a... It has armor. It has armor of ten. Ten? But because it's armor oh, piercing, piercing, it's five. The damage is six. So it takes four... Five, six points of damage. You've blown it away. Whoa. Well, I guess You're... I failed my personal agenda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Father. <laughs> um, yeah, you blew it away. You basically, your, your, your bullets just ripped through it. And as it's coming down the corridor, it, it tries to keep after you. Yeah, it's uh, it, it kind of falls down onto its sort of hands and knees and slumps onto the ground. Acid blood sprayed everywhere, but far enough away from you to get get you, and it's you can hear the sort of hissing noise. So, Commander, I think it's I think it's still alive. I think one more shot will finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't patronise. Close range. Close range. Okay, we do need to have initiatives. It's your actions, guys. Who goes first? Uh, I, I do on the three. Ah, Tone, because uh, you got a panic there, your clip has emptied from your smart gun. Okay, so that's one to two. But you need to, you'll need to spend an action, slow action to reload. Slow, fast action to reload. Okay, well, I'll do that for, as a first thing then. Yep. So does that mean I'm down to, down to two reloads now? Yeah. I sort of reload. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is reload then. Yeah. And then you have a slow action if you wish to do anything else. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to. I think stay in Overwatch, watching this thing to make sure that it's really dead. Okay. Roger. Snap. Yep. Connor. Okay. Well, Connor. should we get through this bulkhead, guys? No. Because we keep Overwatch on, making sure this thing's yeah, dead. Yeah, you can walk backwards slightly while doing that, can you not? Not really. I mean, can we hear any other noise? Well, what's your action, Connor? Can you? Do some checking of. Well, I'm going to go through. Can you, can you not check for? Motion yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do that as well. But I want to go through the bulkhead because obviously. Well, okay, fast action. You can way. stay through the bulkhead, which takes you into. Um, a kind of anti room where the stairwell is, and there's a. Uh, yeah, basically the stairwell anti room. And the stairwell is on your right hand side. You can do your your motion sensor again if you like, but then that's another roll on yep. your energy. So I still I rolled two dice. Yeah, we rolled two dice. That's not reduced to power. Okay, so you do get that. Um, give me your maps back. again. <laughs> okay, he's not moving anymore. 
You are there. Okay. Well, you're just going to take us a clip every time we wipe one out. It's because you rolled the one. On oh, the, right. Because what had yeah. a clip. Yeah. yeah. Basically means that instead of just doing a, a control burst, you just went right. and blew it away, but fired off right. your entire clip because you panicked. That's what I'm doing. Better That's than not doing, though. Yeah. Well done. Okay. So I thought it would be harder than that to. It's pretty good hits. Four sixes with, a, with the, the biggest, the most powerful gun there is. Yeah. Okay, so that's your action, Connor. Um, on the aliens go. Well, can I give a report of this? No, today? no, you can't because you're looking at it at the moment. Okay. On the aliens go, the alien you thought was dead gets up and leaps towards you. But you're an overwatch, so you get to fire. So, um, do it on initiative 10 and you can fire first. Okay. Let me think of the ammo again. Well, I'll try that too. Possibly. With my five stress, there's a pretty good chance that I will. Okay, I'm going to roll to see how close he gets before you finish him. If you finish him. Assuming you finish him. Okay. So, yeah, he's. he's He's, he's, not, he's not leaping at you, he's, he's getting back up and he's starting to run towards you, but he's not very far. So there is a panic. Only successes, I believe. Okay, so roll for your panic then, to him. It's two or lower. Two. Four. Four. Five is nine. So the overkill talent, though, so if that triggers. I think it the... triggers at 11, I think. So nine, freeze. You're frozen by fear or stress for one round, losing your next point of action. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in near range increases by one. Okay, um, nine, you're frozen, so you miss. Would it actually affect Con's character? Because he's actually gone through the bulkhead. No, I think that's probably fair enough. Yeah, Con, I don't think you take that stress. Sweet. Um, Roger, you get to fire with your incinerator. Blammo! <laughs> you can To quote somebody who's very close to us. Yes. Blammo. Okay, so your incinerator mm -hmm. doesn't give you a bonus. No. Nope. Um, you don't get a bonus for Overwatch, you just get to fire before he reaches you. Why do uh, I not get a bonus for Overwatch? Because basically it means you act out of the initiative order. Otherwise, he would, he would get an attack on one of you. Right. The Overwatch basically is you're waiting for him to get up. Yeah. Doesn't give you a bonus for aiming or anything. It just right. means you get to act yeah. in the middle of his initiative. Right. Okay. Sorry. So, so, so what yeah. was again? What am I putting on now? The um, ranged so combat. Ranged combat. So that's six. Plus um, your plus your stress. stress. Six, seven, eight, nine. So that's six of these. Five, six, and then two stress dice. Three. Sorry, three stress dice. Oh my god. <laughs> right. This might not be a good idea. But. I think I think it is a good idea. Right. No stress. Success. No stress. But that one success. One success. Okay, that's a hit. Um, yeah, it was almost gone. The flames blast into it, and it <laughs> falls on the ground, burning. So this podcast special was brought to you by Effect, with the kind support of the team, Tony, Connor, and Roger. Music is Stars on a Black Sea and used with permission of Free League Publishing. <laughs>